I greet you in the name of Jesus, my brother and sister. It's a pleasure to spend this time in this holy abode to speak about God's kindness and goodness. It's been a year, a week filled with lots of things up and down, but we want to glorify God for He has made it possible for us to gather here to worship Him in this manner. I want to invite you in this sacred space that we've been set for to be able to worship even in online worship. God is not confined by issues of how He can express Himself. I am directed and convinced that today I could probably spend some few minutes to speak to you about God's provision. Have you ever waited for God's provision? Have you ever desired for God to do something incredible in your life? We have this narrative in the book of Genesis. It unlocks the story of Abraham. This Abraham, who is known to be the father of faith, was tested to the very core. We are introduced to his story where he is expecting a child whom he has been waiting for many years. But what, what will capture my attention is that this man, besides being a father of faith, will be tempted to work, work by his works. What do I suggest to say? Abraham, as we all know, he is expectant of a child who has been promised by God. He had spent many years without a child and is expecting God to do something marvelous in his life. What was this thing that is waiting? The culture in the ancient Near East dictated that someone who, a man who probably be a, an, a, a mourner, it was a, a man who was supposed to be a leader. But look at what will happen. In his leadership, though called as a patri patriarch, he is living in a patriarchal place and in this space he is unable to sire a child. And therefore what will happen is that the maid servant by the name Hagar will be tempted to will be used of his wife to be able to raise a child. And the child they'll get, according to the book of Genesis 16, the name of the child, Ishmael. Beloved of God, Ishmael was a child, yes, but it was not a child of the promise. Have you waited for the promises of God? Remember very well, it is the same Abraham who was still troubled and asking, will Eliezer, my person, become my heir? Why? Everyone wants to live an heir. You who's watching me wants to leave a legacy. You who's with me wants to be seen to make a difference. Now, what will amaze me is that he will fall for the temptation and he'll go and choose someone by the name Hagar. Beloved of God, where does waiting on God take you to? Where does trusting in God take you to? Because what will happen? God will still allow him to have a child. May I say that not just because God is silent and allows you to go through a, sec a section in your life doesn't mean that that is God's promise. Ishmael was a child, maybe to cover the shame, but he was a child of the promise. Sometimes we are tempted to go our own way, to look for other methods to cover up our own shame, but that is not God's way. What promises has God given you? His promises are sure and yes. Now, the Bible will give us a story when he'll be tempted when he gave his only child because God who keeps his promises will eventually give him a child and the child will be named Isaac. This is after a period of waiting. This is after a period of being mocked. This is after a period of issues in his life. But God will do something because he'll be allowed in the book of Genesis 22, he'll be told, take your child, your only child that you love. Have you ever been made to give up what you've been waiting for? Could it be that sometimes you are holding something that doesn't belong to you, but it's God-given? Now he will be told to give his only begotten child. And when he'll take his only son, he'll climb the mountain to go and slay the child. Fortunately, in this incident, we'll find that he will be obedient, oblivious to the fact that probably this was the done deal. Maybe this only child by the name Isaac was supposed to be slayed completely. But when he'll obey, God will provide a lamb. May I mention that God always has a substitute for our struggles. Whatever he's saying that we cannot, there is no temptation that has come to us, except that which is common to us, to man. But even if you're tempted, God will make a way. Which means even in your crisis, God is willing to make a way. And in the greatest story, we find that this person will get a solution. Why? God will provide a lamp. And the lamp was not just a lamp, but a lamp that was supposed to be slain. 
And he said in the book of John that this lamp in the book of John, when John will see Christ come up, he'll say, Behold the lamp of God which takes away the sins of the world. May God bless you. Amen. You may cut your bed. See you.